So we've just finished talking about LPDDR5 on the Steam Deck and you can check that video out on my channel and I'll leave a link in the description below as well. But uh, in that video I talked about the LPDDR5 performance over LPDDR4 and also the memory scaling on DDR4 on Ryzen APUs. So you can see the performance improvement as you increase the memory speed. But in this video, we're going to be talking about LPDDR5X because they've just announced that. And I suppose this is as good a time as any to look over the 5X memory performance improvements. So we're going to compare it to uh, LPDDR5, LPDDR4X, and also LPDDR4. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we have a Discord server, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So we have an article here from Video Cards. The headline is JEDEC announces LPDDR5X memory standard up to 8,533 megabits per second. Now, just to give you an idea of how fast that is, so LPDDR5, the maximum speed was 6,400, and then LPDDR5 on the Steam Deck was actually 5,500. So it's a fair bit faster than the Steam Deck. And also with LPDDR4X, it was 4,266 and regular LPDDR4 was 3,200. So if you have a laptop uh, that you just bought recently that was on 3,200 memory, which still seems pretty fast, um, now this is uh, way faster uh, than what you just bought. But uh, of course, this probably won't come out for a while because this is really just a, a new standard for them to make 5X uh, memory. And so it's probably not gonna come out for a while. So we've had, uh, we haven't even had any LPDDR5 laptops anyways. So uh, we're getting some Tiger Lake laptops with LPDDR5 and of course Steam Deck is coming at the end of the year as well. So it's really just starting to get, we're really just starting to get LPDDR5 memory at the end of the year. Now let's have a quick look through the article and JEDEC, they're the JEDEC Solid State Technology Association, the global leader in standards development. So really, uh, they're just collaborating with all of these companies like Samsung and Micron. And then they're just asking them, well, uh, what do you want to see in 5X? And then they're kind of collaborating between the two. Make sure there's some sort of standard that everybody follows. And so when companies like Micron and Samsung or whoever else wants to develop, LPDDR memory, then uh, they have to develop it to this standard, um, which is better marketing for everybody because now people can say, hey, look, we've got LPDDR uh, memory in the, and everyone can be uh, sure that they're getting a product that adheres to this standard. So what is the difference between LPDDR and DDR? Well, DDR is mainly used for desktops. LPDDR is mainly used for laptops and mobiles. LPDDR stands for Low Power Double Data Rate. Now you can actually get the same memory bandwidth or the same performance in both. They just achieve it in different ways. So with DDR, you're actually using that in dual channel 64-bit. And then with LPDDR, you're actually using that in quad channel 32-bit, but they both equate to a 128-bit bus. Now in terms of other differences, you have DDR4 here, which is uh, running at 1.2 volts, and LPDDR4 actually runs a little bit lower voltage at 1.1 volts. So if you were to compare these memories in the same laptop, you would actually get a little bit better performance on LPDDR4, which is to be expected because uh, you're running it off a battery, so you want more efficiency or more uh, battery life on that laptop. Now, in terms of other differences, LPDDR costs a little bit more, and also uh, it's easier to upgrade uh, on DDR4 because you just throw more sticks of RAM into your desktop, and you're not worried as much about efficiency or the amount of power it uses because you're attached to the wall 100% of the time with your desktop. Now, let's go back to the article and talk about LPDDR5, and it says here the speed extension is up to 8,533 megabits per second versus up to 6,400 megabits per second in the previous revision. Signal integrity improvements with TX RX equalization. Reliability improvements via the new adaptive refresh management feature or feature. 
the new LPDDR5X component of JES D2095B is an optional extension intended to offer higher bandwidth and simplified architecture in support of enhanced 5G communication performance and is designed for applications ranging from automotive to high resolution augmented reality, virtual reality and edge computing using AI. So there are a few other things thrown in there for newer technologies which we don't really know too much about uh, in terms of 5G or AI, that type of thing, or even like a virtual reality headsets. But uh, th those are some of the things that they have improved upon on uh, this LPDDR5X over LPDDR5. So I made this table with the LPDDR5X speed. So we're just going to run over how fast 5X really is in terms of memory bandwidth. So you can see here LPDDR4 with 3200 memory speed that runs at 51.2 gigabytes per second on a 128 bit bus. And with LPDDR4X that runs at 68.3 gigabytes per second with the LPDDR5 Steam Deck at 5500 memory speed, that runs at 88 gigabytes per second. Now just stop there for a second and say that that seems about right with RDNA2 compute units. With RDNA2, the uh, RDNA2 versus the Vega uh, compute units, that was about a 25% to 30% performance improvement anyways. so. Uh, that makes sense to have the Steam Deck with LPDDR5. It wouldn't make as much sense if you were to stick the LPDDR4X on there with the memory speed of 68.3 uh, GB per second because uh, you actually have already have some laptops such as uh, the Ryzen 4800U with uh, memory speeds of 4266 on there anyway. Now with LPDDR5, that actually goes up to 6400 and I think the reason why is probably to do with cost. And I think with uh, memory speeds, they tend to cost a lot more as you go up in memory speed. Uh, that's pretty evident on DDR4 on desktop where uh, even sticks of like DDR4 4000 for example uh, cost way more than like a standard stick of DDR4 3200. Uh, now with LPDDR5X, the memory speed is 8,533 and then the memory bandwidth is 136.5 gigabytes per second. And I think this is something that we're probably not going to see for a while. If you look at this roadmap, uh, none of these actually use uh, LPDDR5X yet. Maybe they'll swap it in uh, at some later stage. Maybe they feel like um, with Ram Rembrandt or Phoenix, uh, now that you're on five nanometer, you can fit more RDNA2 units on there. Uh, or maybe uh, they'll swap that out for RDNA3. We don't know. Uh, Ryzen 6000 is really not coming this year. I think it will probably be next year. And Ryzen 7000 might even be the year after that. So that would make it um, 2023. So by 2023, you'd probably expect them to use LPDDR5X. So that could, this roadmap could change. Uh, this was something that somebody cobbled up together anyway, based on information around the internet. So it's not exactly official anyway, but uh, you probably would expect them to start using LPDDR5X uh, by around 2023 in laptops. So finally, I wanted to show off memory scaling and I've already shown this in my LPDDR5 Steam Deck video. So if you've already watched that, there's probably no need for you to watch this. Uh, but this is memory scaling on the Ryzen 5 4600G with memory speeds tested at um, 2666 to 4133. So this is actually the results across eight different games. As you increase the memory speeds, you do get a performance improvement uh, and these games uh, continue to require more memory bandwidth. So I think you can see there, if you were to increase the memory speed some more, you would get uh, performance improvement still. So if you were to improve to 5500, even on the Vega compute units, you would still get some improvements, uh, performance improvement. And so I think it's likely that you will see that um, even if you move up to 8533, uh, at least on uh, improved compute units like an RDNA2 or RDNA3 in the future, you will get performance improvements as you increase the memory speeds. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.